live session of wood burning with me at Broke Girls Art School. Um, this is the dog portrait that I'm working on. Sorry, it's hard to see with the glare, but as you can see, I'm about halfway done with both the faces. Um, I'm probably gonna go back into this one for a little bit, and then I might hop on a little bit later when I go back into this one. We shall see where the evening takes us, but I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see my hand movements a little bit better. But again, here is what the dog looks like. And then that's our burning, all right? And I'll show you guys at the end, we'll do a little comparison side by side. But um, per usual, I am using my Colwood Super Pro 2. Sorry if you can see that. Oh, there we go, Colwood. Um, love this burner. I have been using it like crazy for the past few years and I've never had any issues with it. So nothing but good things to say about Colwood. And right now I have my burner set to about a four. So I'm starting a little bit lower and I usually toggle my temperature quite a bit as I'm burning. And just so you guys can see, this is the tip I'm using. It is the uh, transfer tip shader by Razor Tip. I'll try to remember to tag some links for you guys in the description box below. But so the first thing I'm doing here is just going around and darkening the nose a bit and start getting some shadowing in and we'll just kind of work our way around the left side of the face. So when the tip's pretty hot, I recommend moving it around quickly because the longer that you leave it sitting in one spot, the darker it's gonna burn. So, and I usually like to layer my stuff in so I won't go in super dark right off the bat. So I'm just getting a nice outline of that nose here. Add some darker shading of the center. definitely found that this shader has helped me burn a lot quicker. I feel like I get a lot more surface area coverage when I'm using the whole flat tip and I can just slowly work in the values how I want. I'm not totally done with this side of the face either. I'm probably going to go back in and darken some stuff up, but we're going to move on to the other side for now. So I usually like to think of my portraits in terms of value. So I try to like just go through what, as I'm looking at the picture and I'll sometimes I'll go about it differently sometimes. Like I'll try to get all my dark values out of the way first and then I'll get my mid-tones and then add highlights. But no matter what process you like to use, um, just be conscious of it. And if you're struggling with how to shade a piece, just you know, don't look at it like you're looking at a dog. Look at it like you're looking at just a bunch of different values of sh and shadows. And just putting those shadows in the right placement will help you out quite a bit. You can see when I move my hand slower, it darkens up those edges that I want. That's like a nice little mid-tone base for the nose there. I'll probably go back and layer and darken up stuff as I see fit, but right now we're just getting down that base layer. And if you guys need help with how to stencil um, pictures onto a slab of wood, I do have other videos explaining my process for that. So feel free to look through my um, wood burning tutorials playlist and I have a couple tutorials on how to stencil. But 
but I always go through and erase a little bit, like before I burn. <laughs> Sorry, knocked this guy over. There we go. So as I was saying, I always um, erase the stencils a little bit right before I burn. Like, as you can see, it's pretty dark over here. And since this is a light colored dog, I wouldn't want that graphite to be coming through, coming through the burn. And it's a lot harder to erase pencil once you've burned over it because it kind of like sinks into the wood. So it's just something to be um, conscious of. Go in and knock out some of my darker values. And even add more contrast if you see fit. Um, I like to have pretty high contrast in my burns because I feel like it makes them a lot more readable. the longer that you've been burning and you know with the techniques with your speed but everybody moves at a different pace so don't be don't get down on yourself if it takes you a little bit longer than most Oop. lighten up that graphite just a little bit I'm actually gonna go over here first and add a little bit more shadowing like where these dark spots are coming through. All these whiskers look a lot nicer with my Dremel tool later, but I usually save that for one of the last steps. Alright, so I usually like to outline kind of like how I do when I am tattooing. It makes the features a bit more prominent, but I'm staying super close to the surface of the wood. I am really not um, using much pressure at all. I'm just letting the heat do the work for me. eyes are pretty dark on the outside. He's got a lot of black on the outside of his eyes. I'm gonna make sure I hit those values so, you know, it's a lot darker, especially in comparison to the other dog.
All right, so then since there's like a lot of heavy black in this area, I raised up my heat a little bit so I can just kind of zip through this a little bit quicker. I'm just using these short little up and down motions. I'm gonna slow down my hand a little bit just to make sure it gets in there nice and dark. And guys, always be mindful of the direction of the fur. I try to shade my pen in the direction, especially if there's like noticeable like changes in color in the fur. You wanna make sure that you're getting the getting it going like in the right direction. I don't go too crazy like making sure every single hair is perfectly in place. Um, because if I were to try to make my work that crazy, then I would need to charge way more for it that a lot of people wouldn't want to spend. So in order to finish a project, to make it an acceptable price point <laughs> to where I can actually sell them regularly, um, you know, I still get a good amount of detail and I still am like following, like I said, the direction of the fur and everything, but so I'm getting the like same effect without spending a ton of time trying to get every hair just right. Personally, I just don't have the patience to spend like 40 hours on a wood burn. <laughs> Props to the people that do, but I just can't stare at the same thing for that long, honestly. That's why I have like 50 unfinished art projects just laying around my house. I'll get to them eventually though, right? <laughs> That's at least what I tell myself.
Again, I know all this stuff looks really sloppy right now, but once I go over it with my Dremel tool, I'll just show you guys real quick actually what the whiskers are gonna look like. So here's the Dremel tool I use. It's a craft Dremel. Um, like I said, I'll tag links in the description box for you guys after I'm done with this live at some point. <laughs> all right, so let me try to find my chip for this real quick. My handy dandy messy wood burning tray. <laughs> all right. So all you do, I'm just putting on a ballpoint tip. Add that to my Dremel and excuse this, it's going to get a little bit loud. All right, so I'm doing whiskers. You can drill right over the previous burning that you did. I'll need to grab like a smaller tip eventually too, but just showing you guys so that you get the idea. make the whiskers look like they pop off a little bit too. Um, like I said, I'm going to need to grab a little bit of a smaller tip so I can kind of dig into these divots and get some of that, um, some more of the burned wood out. Um, but yeah, I highly, re highly recommend investing in a Dremel tool for that reason. Um, it's just really, really helpful for adding highlights or even fixing any error errors that you might have had. I'm gonna turn down my heat a little bit. Even the spots that are like bright white in photographs, I still like to, um, you know, hard, like barely run over, just so it's like not just the bare wood. So even like this part of the snout is pretty white in the photograph. I'm still going to go over this area, but to the point where it doesn't even really affect the hue of the wood, but more so like the texture of it, because after you like put heat on top of the wood, it kind of makes it like smoother and shinier in a way. All right, so now I'm gonna hike my heat back up and hammer out some more black spots. Really get them in there nice and solid. Right now I have my temperature at a little bit over a five, which I don't like to go too hot with this tip because um, it melts. <laughs> so you can't be burning on super, super high temps for a long time with this. Um, but yeah, when I started this other half of the face earlier, I really didn't go into it as much as I would have liked to. So I'll go in and darken some stuff up. Like I always say in my videos, guys, I think it's super important to go back into projects a couple times so that way you can see it with fresh eyes. It's very extremely rare. Almost never will I just like finish a project and then never look at it again. I always try to go back into something at least once and um, do any altercations that I need to. Especially with wood burning, I don't know if it's just in my head or not, but I feel like sometimes um, after I like burn something and I let it sit for a few days, I feel like some of the spots get a little bit lighter. I don't know if it's just because when you initially burn the wood and it's hot, it um, has a different hue to it, which would make sense, but like I said, just worth going back into just in case. So this spot on the ear is pretty much like pitch black on this dog. Mm -hmm. 
again, taking advantage of those really dark areas. So even though that this part of the face is pretty dark, if I put like really solid black behind it, then it makes that face come more in the foreground. Again, taking advantage of this really dark spot around, um, especially because the ear from the other dog is overlapping and that dog's white, so it'll really make it pop out the darker you go next to a lighter tone. When it comes to contrast and stuff, guys, that translates to all different mediums of art. I mean, the stuff that I talk about when I'm wood burning, I also apply when I'm painting, when I'm tattooing. Art is pretty universal, which is cool because then you just keep building more and more skills and you know, the more you practice things, it's gonna help you out in all other aspects. I usually like to do a pretty nice harsh outline around the edges as well. Again, just to make it pop out from the background as much as possible. And even a step further than that, after I do the harsh outline, then I'll go back in with my Dremel tool and do like a very light outline outside of that even, just to give it that extra pop. Especially if I'm doing stuff in the background because you never want to risk making stuff like fall flat. putting the names on the bottom here. So that's why I kind of have this space open. I'm not gonna drag the chest down too far. But yeah, guys, you got a pretty good idea. Um, you got a good chunk done. I mean, I pretty much Finished up this whole other half of the face in just under a half hour. Crazy how time flies when you're having fun, huh? <laughs> okay, you guys, I'm gonna try to be posting uh, quite a lot more videos, you know, getting into this winter. Um, I'm gonna be starting to tattoo quite a bit less. Uh, not because I don't want to tattoo as much as I am, but carpal tunnel is starting to set in and my lower back starts screaming at me after like, you know, three hours of work. So <laughs> I'm going to try to push this YouTube stuff pretty hard and hopefully, hopefully it'll take off for me. Wish me luck, guys. Tell your friends. Tell them to subscribe to my channel if uh, <laughs> you want to help a sister out. Yeah, I think we got a lot done. Um, like I said, I might hop back on do another live session when I'm on, working on the other side of this. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions at all for me, 
please drop a comment. I will try to get back to you as always. And um, feel free to send me pictures of any like artwork that you've been working on or if you want any specific advice, feel free to shoot a message over to my Instagram account, which is at burnblueart. Um, my other Instagram account for tattooing is at skyblues_tattoos. if you want to check that out as well. But um, yeah, guys, I'm going to hop off for a little bit tonight. I hope you learned something. And let me know if you enjoy these real-time videos because I have a good time doing them. So, yeah, we'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for swinging by.